it's time for us to have a conversation on this consumer tech segment. And today we're going to be talking about how tech can influence parenting. All right, and I've been joined by Stephen Nassay Brady. He is going to help us to get into this topic. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Chris. How are you? I'm very well. It's thank good you. to have you here. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, parenting can be daunting yeah. sometimes, you know. And um, now that we are in this very fast paced world, it can even be a little more scary for parents, considering the fact that knowledge is. There's a, no, there's a knowledge overload, basically. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. How can parents use tech to keep up with the modern trends of parenting and be effective at it? Okay, so um, once again, thank you for having me. There are several tools out there that can be used. Um, it's but if one look at parenting in general, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of parents use various platforms, but I want to focus mainly on two areas okay. that parents are called upon to be very involved mm. Um, in their kids' development, mainly their education, okay. and also picking skills that they need, mm -hmm. I mean, life skills and all, and hobbies and things like that. This has become more important since we had COVID, mm -hmm. and the kids Absolutely. are still at home. Absolutely. And so there's a lot going on that yes. kids uh, need their parents to support. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that, that's where the challenge has become bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can just go straight into yes. it. Yes, let's get into One it. One of the biggest platforms that has become popular over this period is Google Classroom. Okay. Now, before um, the lockdown, there is some of us who do trainings, remote workshops and stuff, mm. knew about Google Classroom, but it's become more popular now. Yeah. Schools are using it. Unfortunately, in Ghana, not all schools are using it. Mm. And so, as a parent, you need to somehow plan to I mean, manage your kids yeah. such that they can have tasks to do and all of them. The beautiful way to do it is to be able to kind of create collaborations between your kids and their friends and their peers, their cousins, families, mm -hmm. and them from remote. So if you're using Google Classroom, if you can just delve yeah. into it, it enables you to create like a classroom okay. for your kids. Mm -hmm. So whatever their age, you create a classroom, yeah. you, the, you act as the teacher, so you set them assignments, they can collaborate with their friends mm -hmm. who are also invited into the classroom. Yeah set them assignments, they do them, they share them with you, you evaluate and send it back to them. Mm. It helps you to really keep up to, I mean, uh, with what they had to do yes. in school. Yes. Schools which are using it are now sending some of the tasks and the assignments through Google Classroom. Okay. So as a parent, you are called upon to supervise how they're mm. using it and you need to mm. be online to do that. So that's mm. a big one okay. there. Even if your kids are not your kid's school mm. is not using it. Yeah. You can create it yourself. And it's not difficult. It comes free with a with Gmail Google. account. Okay. Of course, if you're at school, you will need uh, a licensed, mm. I mean, uh, user uh, account. But as a parent mm. who's using it with just four or five kids, you use that. I'll give an example. I help my nephews to play piano. Okay. So I send them tasks, I will send them sheet music to do. Okay. Then they can collaborate. Some are in the States, some in the UK, everywhere okay. else. So then they can play, mm. compare with each other, they can record it, okay. share it with me, all that. So it helps you to manage them yeah. and it takes away some of the burden yeah. from my uh, sisters and brothers yes. who cannot do that with yes. them. So that's one. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I like that. I like that. What, what else is there? There's also what we call, let me just, I mean, uh, uh, there's one called Brain Pop. Okay. Talking about schools, though, mm. I love Brain Pop because it has curriculum that's designed for almost every country. It's like global. Okay. So if you went on the Brain Pop, for example, if they can just show it for us, okay. So if you went on the Brain Pop, please go to the About page, and I will just walk through some of the things that it goes through for you. So how it helps the kids. So if you go to the About page, please on the link. If not, just I'll just do it from here. So Brain Pop. It allows you to be a, the tasks are playful. Mm. For example, they are also educator focused. Okay, and then they are reflective. Also, they are global. Mm. So wherever the kids are, whichever country they can relate to it. And it's got courses on science, on uh, English, on history, yeah. on social studies, yeah. all sorts. So you don't have to sweat preparing. It. Okay. And there, because it's playful and mm. fun, the kids can really relate. They learn yeah. in a fun environment. Yeah. And it tracks also how well they are doing. So mm. you, as the parent, can be able to see their progress. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
What else? What else? What else? That's, that, that's also one I call. Uh, you, we all know National Geographic. Yes. On YouTube, National Gra Geographic has National Geographic Kids. Okay. That's and there's a YouTube channel. So that's you can go there, you can watch all the videos which we yeah. teach you about dinosaurs, mm. about things that kids really want to learn about mm. the environment. Again, this is stuff that they would have probably been learning in school. They would probably not be learning in school. Yeah. But it helps them to be able to do that. So mm. that's another one for you. National Geographic Kids. Yeah. Okay. On YouTube. Okay. Um, so we have Google Classroom, Brain Pop. Yes, National, National Geographic, Geographic Kids. Kids on YouTube. On, on, YouTube. on YouTube. Then, of course, in Ghana, we've got Asanka. Okay. Which has become very, very popular mm. since, I mean, the lockdown. And Asanka gives us the resources. Yeah. What I love about Asanka is that um, you can even use it offline. You can share the resources that are there. Okay. But, I mean, so, as a family, it doesn't add too much to your bill. Of course, mm. we know through COVID, people are struggling to pay, like, internet bills and all yeah. of that. But Asanka is designed for homes to use and it doesn't add too much to their bills for example okay. it's also got courses that are more contextual to our i mean environment okay yeah. wow okay so and um any more for the education side um there's one called storyline okay i like storyline now storyline if you go there there are books on various I mean, stories again it's fun all of like that but what it does also is that as you go through them it sets you tasks mm. okay. for example so you go to storyline.net Mm. Okay, and again, you can try. I love the fact that when you are there and you're going through the courses, it can be tracked. Mm. It, you do it by your level. So, for example, as a parent, you can set tasks for your mm. kids. This week, we are reading this book. Some of them are just 14 minutes yeah. to do. So, so they, you can set tasks when you can monitor how well they are doing, they are doing step okay. by step. And it okay. helps you as a parent because mm. parents are still working. Yeah. They leave home and they set the task for their kids. You can go back or during the, the day, if you mm, call home, you can check, you in. Can check in to see yeah. how well they're doing. And these okay. are stories that are great. I mm. mean, to, you just need to subscribe mm. and you can, I mean, use them. And what, what's the cost like in terms of when you say subscribe? Uh, what's the cost like? It depends on what you want. If you can just click on subscribe for us. Okay. Okay, I'm and then you put in, I guess you put in an email address, right? Yeah, you put in an email you address. put in an email address okay. and, and then, then you like, but so, there are various packages. So it looks, this one looks like it will be a free. Um, it's free to start with, but the, I mean, depending on what level you want to go, you, go, you, you pay a few dollars to, pay to do that. Yeah. Else. What okay. I often say is try it with a free mm. version. I often say to people, try yeah. with a free version. If, if it works for good, you, if yeah. it's good for you, mm. then it makes sense to pay a bit more yeah. to use it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. okay, so let's go on. What else is there that parents can do with the kids? So that's about, I mean, for the, the education, education bit. Side. I want to talk a bit also about uh, fun stuff okay. and hobbies. Okay. There's a website, there's an app called Piano Lessons by Simply Piano. Mm. Okay. Uh, what it does is it helps kids to learn piano. Okay. The app is connected from your phone to the piano. So while they go through, like, that's it on the screen there. Okay. So while they, when they play, the, phone, the app listens to it on the phone, it can correct them. So it starts all the way from, let's see, oh, wow. what's the middle C? Yeah. Shows you where the middle C is. There's uh, even a character there that has mm. a really funny voice that kids will fall in love with. Okay. To learn it. Yeah. So it's not like having me, for it's example, boring, boring, yeah. boring me teaching your kids piano. Okay, okay. Okay. okay, and it, it works with every keyboard or piano. Home. All you mm. need is that you need to be able to turn on the, uh, the, the app on your phone. The, 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 on your phone, yeah. and it needs to be able to hear the audio mm. so that it can pick and communicate with them. Okay. Tell them, oh, that's correct, that's not correct, mm. or whatever. It, it's very, very engaging. Okay. Um, yeah, so. try play that video. Let's let's hear it. Hello, my name is Maria and in this video I want to talk about how to sit at the piano with the correct posture. Uh, you have main two things to remember. And the first one is that you don't actually sit at the very back of the piano bench or your chair, but only about at the first half of it, okay? Almost at the edge. And the second thing to remember is that your feet have to be able to be on the floor, not dangling. Not, not like this either. And uh, for children, you probably need books or something under their feet to get them to a higher level. And the same is true of the bench. Children might need something to get them to sit higher. Or if you have a adjustable piano bench, sit lower or higher depending on, on the child. 
Now, let me show you some reasons why this is. It all has to do with muscle tension and being comfortable. If I'm here and I play from here, then these muscles will have more tension than if I am here. And your wrist must not be like this. And must to use it. Because what you really want is for the kids to enjoy mm. doing it, be able to exhibit how well they are doing using these I mean, mm. tools. So you really, really want to get Google and go for them. And you go to the website, you can use it. Just set, agree with them, all right, this month we're doing French or whatever. The basic things that they can learn all the way through. So great one also for the kids while they are home. Fantastic. So that's Duolingo. Yes. That's Duolingo. Yes. Okay, super. Yeah, so we have piano lessons by uh, Simply Piano. Yes. And then Duolingo. Yes. Super. There's, there's another uh, one there, if I can just quickly yes, go into it. I yes. mean, traveling is a challenge now. Mm. Some families love to travel, do the tours and all of that. There's a website called uh, travellandleisure.com. And if you went there, it gives you a virtual tour of some of the great museums across the world. Okay. So if you went there, so this one, for example, um, yeah, if you scroll down, it will list some of, the, uh, some of the museums that you can tour. Okay. And it's a virtual tour, so we'll walk you through it. So, uh, British so Museum London. It's a very quick way to learn a lot yeah. of, 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 of things just by, you know, jumping into the website. Yeah. Yeah. So museums and what, what else? What are, what are some of the other attractions? That we can, we can there, there are other tools which I've listed here, but mm. other tools also you can use to learn poetry, for example. Okay, I see. The key thing I would say is that for this period, get the kids to do things that are fun to mm. do. They can do them independently online. You monitor it by setting up the yeah. tasks. Okay. To do that, mm. and it doesn't cost too much. It also exposes like this um, leisure tour. Thing. It exposes them to even what they would have had to fly across the country. Mm. They can learn them here. Yeah. These are things also that they don't learn yeah. in school mm. readily. So mm. the kids are really getting a lot. Just to close, one of the things I would say is that because over this period, there are a lot more people online. All the perverts are also online. Are also online. Mm. Mm. So you need okay. to be careful who how your we, kids are engaging with. with that? Now, that's, that's why you need to, I mean, it starts off, those of us who that, it starts off with somebody just trying to sound nice to the kids. They may even pretend to be their age or whatever. Mm. So give your kids good, I mean, talking to, give them an understanding of how these things start. Mm. If they get to know how these things start, they will tell you whenever More anybody cautious, sending them yeah. an email, that's whatever. And if they have an email, make sure you have access to the email as well. Mm. So you can check what's going on. Okay. Yeah. Plus, if you are monitoring the history, the browsing history, daily you'll be able to tell where they've gone to okay but there are some kids also that as they browse around they'll see things popping up mm -hmm. get. so for example one of the first things you do is you try and block all pop-ups mm. so things are not popping up that would attract them to be able to, to want to click yeah. on it to go onto sites yeah. that they've not planned you've yeah. not planned for them yeah. to use plus have a good antivirus mm. for example installed okay that way then the various things that are coming people will be able to sell send them other i mean like malware and all those mm. all those things Plus, the security settings. So, for example, if you're downloading anything, it will prompt. Mm. Yeah. Them. So, so I, I think that, I mean, I mean, some parents may say, okay, listen, a good antivirus is, is, is expensive. Um, but I think that talking about the security settings, that's a good place to start. Yeah. yeah. A good place to start. And, and for the security settings, I don't expect every parent to be an IT person. No. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So, the best thing to do, we all have IT friends. In, yeah, somebody in who knows Just what to call do. somebody yeah. and say, oh, I'm, my kids are going to be using this laptop in particular. Can you help me set up so that there's child protection mm. on it and all those things? Mm. And monitor regularly. So, if there are things that probably, because sometimes some of these things, you miss them. Okay. And it's only when you're monitoring that you're able to tell, ah, this should have been blocked. Mm. Okay. And so you block it the next time. So yeah. monitor the history, track what's going on on the machine regularly, yeah. and you'll be able to help with that. Super. Let's just talk a little bit about Duolingo again. Yeah. Um, it's something that is an app I found not too long ago myself, yeah. and, and I found it very exciting. Um, how, why, talk to us about why it's important at this stage of a kid's life mm -hmm. to expose them to an app like Duolingo. Um, as opposed to leaving it for them to discover it later in life. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So when we were growing up, you know, we were growing up, French was the only language that we yeah. 
were taught in school. We mm -hmm. didn't even take it serious. No. <laughs> but the world is so global now yeah. that kids are communicating with people from all over the place. Mm -hmm. The more versatile they are, the more languages they know, the more even employable they are. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we all have a plan, yeah. we have a vision that our kids will be international yeah. kids. As they travel, be able to check into a hotel, have a conversation with people, yeah. engage with people. It makes you more, well, should I say sellable? It adds yeah. to your value. It, it gives you more value. It does. So it's yeah. good very early to get on those things. Same as the piano I talked mm -hmm. about. The places I've been able to get to just by being somebody who is able to play and be able to engage with people, whether yeah. it's piano or guitar or whatever. Yeah. So let them learn some of these skills, which they will carry with them all through like their, their lives, their lives yeah. as they grow. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's why it's important. And Duolingo is a great one, um, not difficult to use. No, it's not. It's not. And what I like about Duolingo the most is the fact that you can play games yes. to rehearse what you yes. learned. Yes. And you, you know, and the kids can learn it's together. Brilliant. It's brilliant. So at home, you can decide, well, over dinner today, we're only speaking French. Mm. That's a good one. That's then you're engaged because I'm you. Yeah. The then you can actually you practice, practice your what you're doing. It's, yeah. I love it. It's brilliant. it's brilliant. I love it. Thank you, Stephen. This That's has been right. This has been good. So Stephen Nasebwedu has been helping us to understand um, what it is that we can do in using tech to actually help us in parenting. Um, Stephen, where can people find you? How people can reach you? Uh, the best way to find me is on Twitter. Okay. You look for at Nase, N-A-A-S-E-I. Uh -huh. Just drop me a message. At Nase. At Nase. That's it. That's it. You are the owner of At Nase. You're Forgive. the only Nase. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive. All right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant um, experience for parents at this time with all these tech um, 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 websites and pages and apps and so on available. It makes parenting a lot easier. Thank you very much to Stephen. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.